In this video, we're going to look at acceleration as a function of velocity. But before we get to that, first of all, we have to know that acceleration, no matter what kind of acceleration we're looking at, is defined as the rate of change of velocity. So we can write that, uh, we can write that like this. Acceleration is equal to dv over dt. All right, the change in velocity over a little bit of change in time. So before we were looking at things like acceleration due to gravity, that was a and that was when acceleration was in terms of t. So we could write it like this, acceleration a at t, which is probably more familiar to you. Um, but we can have acceleration in terms of velocity or position as well. For example, if we had acceleration in terms of velocity, uh, this could be from something like a train or a plane that's slowing down with wind resistance and drag. And its acceleration, or I guess its deceleration, would actually have to do with how fast it's going, not necessarily how long it's been going for. So this is what we're looking at in this type of problem. So how do we solve this? Well, <clears throat> what we want to do is if we want to solve for the, if we're given some information in the problem, we'll actually be given some value here. It'd be like v squared. Accelerate a at v is equal to v squared or negative 0.005v, something like that. So if we wanted to solve for the time or the velocity at a given time, um, this is the way we would solve that. So we would switch these variables. So we get, um, we can write dt is equal to dv over acceleration of v, a of v. And then what we want to do is integrate both sides. Uh, the left side is with respect to time, so we have from t naught to t. And the right side is with respect to v, right? We have dv, so we go from v naught to v. All right. Um, and again, in this video, we're actually just looking at the method. We're not using real, real numbers. We'll do that in the next video. So this is just how to actually go about solving these problems. Um, we can simplify this one more step because if we were actually new a at v, that would be a little easier for us. But we can simplify the left side, I suppose. So this will give us t minus t naught once we go through with that integration is equal to the same left hand side, v naught to v, and this is dv over av. All right, and uh, hopefully you were super good at doing integrals by now, so if we actually had a number in here, you'd be able to do this no problem. Anyways, this is, uh, once you solve that, this would be able to give us a time, or this would also be able to give us a velocity. You know, velocity at a certain time, or time when it's going at a certain velocity. It depends what the question, uh, what information was given to us in the question. So now if we want to solve for position, we can again write the same expression here. Acceleration of v, or a at v, is equal to dv over dt. Now what we want to do here is we want to multiply both the top and the bottom by the same thing. So it's like it's not changing the equation. You're basically multiplying it by 1. So let's multiply the times ds, and we'll also multiply the bottom times ds. Now, because this is multiplication, we can switch the order of these a little. So we can also say this is equal to dv over ds is equal to, or sorry, not equal to, uh, times ds over dt. Right? We did this in the last video. This is a little trick. Um, but when we notice, when we look at this here, uh, here, let's change colors, ds dt, ds dt, is equal to velocity, right? This is the change in position over time. So we can also write this as acceleration of v is equal to dv ds times v. Okay, hope I didn't lose anyone there. Uh, now what we're going to do is we'll just we'll come down here and write this a little cleaner. So we have so we're not getting confused. Acceleration a at v is equal to dv ds times v. And now what we want to do is we just want to switch these variables around a little bit, put everything with v's on one side, and uh, put everything with s's on the other. So we'll come over here, we'll bring the s up, we get ds is equal to dv um, times v, actually you know what, we, it's a little cleaner if you write it like this, v over a of v dv. All right, and so now all we have to do is we integrate both sides. The left side is with respect to s, so we have s naught to s. The right side is all with respect to v, so we have v naught to v. And again, we can simplify this left side if we really wanted to. 
without even knowing anything about a at v. So we would have s minus s naught <clears throat> is equal to the integral from v naught to v of v over a at v dv. And from here, if we know a at v, which would be given to us in the problem, we can solve for s. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video, and we'll actually uh, go over one of these problems with real numbers.